This video is sponsored by our good friends at PCBWay, the makers of high-quality PCBs, 3D printing, CNC, injection molding, and more. Hello, Randy Rain here, and people who have followed me for a while now have asked me to make my own toy robot. Well, here you go. This is Randy Robot Garage. So I'm officially counting this as my 200th video, even though I have way more videos on YouTube than 200. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about since I got serious in making YouTube videos. But even then, if you calculate them up, I still have over 200. But that's not what I'm talking about. We had to go through that whole quarantine thing, and so I made some of those videos during there. Those don't count, or at least some of those don't count, because those... We're just having fun so if you take those away and you add in the extra that i've done because if you add up all the saturdays that i put out a video there's nine shorts so but i've done some extra videos and those count well i have it all written down if you want to see it anyway this is the 200 video since i've gotten serious doing youtube videos this is why i'm making my robot i'm doing it by setting rules and one of the rules is to use these little tiny little motors here that I found on eBay, I think. I can't really remember where I got these. But I just so happen to have some eight tooth gears that will fit on these little tiny shafts here. So that's rule number one. The robot has to use these two motors. Rule number two is to use my bago gears and the two millimeter stainless steel shafts that go along with them to make my own gearbox. And rule number three is to make some sort of edge detecting with these little infrared sensors. And rule number four is to use this bigger infrared detector for object detecting. Rule five means it has to have rechargeable batteries and a way to recharge it. And rule six is a time limit. I'm only giving myself six weeks to do this. And then rule seven is the hardest, and it's if anything isn't working, it just must be abandoned and something else tried. So my original idea was to make tank track because I love tank tracks. Tank tracks aren't easy. I designed a little system and it's pretty good. It's a little overcomplicated. There's too many pieces probably, but it does work, but there's a problem. The only way I can really get it to work is by putting a lot of voltage on it and make it go fast. If I try to bring down the voltage, there's not enough power in those little motors to make it go. And if I even find a happy medium, there's also the problem of the belt. The rubber I have is either too rubbery and too wants to form back into a round shape or it's too loose rubbery and it doesn't want to stay on there. And I've tried different wheels. I've tried it with the belt having like a V shape in it and that's too much. It doesn't want to make this hard small bend. And so I got rid of that and made it flat and now I can't keep the belt on. So my little tank tracks aren't working and I either have to spend more time to try to figure out what will work what rubber will work with the tank treads that they will stay on track and they won't pop off and these motors can turn it but that's a losing battle it needs another gear to slow it down and get more torque and with these little motors it's best just to ditch the tank treads and go with a two wheel system and this is a much better design there's only three pieces here that holds the motors and the gears together I'm able to add another gear in place and I'm actually able to use the same shaft over again to add in an extra gear. Now I don't have to put a lot of voltage on it to get it to go and turn. It turns pretty easily. So here's how the motors go in. Like that. And then when these get put in place there's a little section that holds it in.
Okay, so this is the shafts that are, the wheels are going to be on. And this it looks like one shaft, but it's actually two. And, and so this one has these gears. And they will be attached. So one like somewhere about like that, I guess. Okay, so they will go inside somewhere like that with the small gear that and then the top Well, I was so close, so close, but there is one problem. When it went forward, or tried to go forward, it spun in a circle. It only went straight when it went backwards. And the reason is right here. When it goes forward, it doesn't just ride on these two little spots here one of them touches one of them digs in and makes it start spinning of course when it goes the other way there's only one and it's in the center which makes it act more like a rudder so it worked this way but then when it went the other direction it just started spinning so so I fixed it I moved the sensor down and now there's one on each end. So I need to get all this stuff into here. So here's a good spot to talk about the sponsor of this video, PCB Way, who made these little PCBs. Now, I'm no salesperson, so I don't know how to sell this stuff to you. I wouldn't be making this stuff if I was. I'd be out selling things. So there's really only two kinds of people I'm talking to right now. That's people who use and make PCBs and use some other company and want to try a different company like PCB Way or people who are wanting to jump in to making PCBs or 3D printing or CNC or any of that type of stuff. So what to say to these two kinds of people? Well, first of all, to both of them, PCB Way makes quality products. PCB Way has great prices. PCB Way has fast shipping. But if you want to know my favorite part is that they're a backer of the maker community. So they sponsor a lot of people and they do a lot of good things for the maker community. So that's an even better reason to go and use them. 
So the only other thing I can say about PCB Way is it's actually a company that I use and I wouldn't have a sponsor of someone that I didn't use. So go check them out and I thank them for sponsoring this video. All right, I'm actually just going to use wax and put it on. This is like extremely, extremely hard wax. I'm using these 3.7 volt LiPo batteries. They're, they're 100 milliamp hours and I have four of them. Got everything except for the top. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that just yet, but I'm not there anyway. So I'm going to now hook up the motors. Okay, I guess I should hook up the switch now. So I added in two of these diodes here, and that's just to reduce the electricity down, to slow it down some. I'll get into that later. But now it's time to hook these sensors up.
Okay, now all these negatives have to be on the negative side of the switch. So people have asked me why I don't use these motor control chips and the reason is because I'm 100% self-taught on everything I've ever done and basically I just didn't know how to use them and this is the perfect time to learn. see the LED light up so it's detecting so I'm gonna get to my hand right there Boop. that's pretty close I'd have to adjust that that's what this little potentiometer here does So I'm going to have to stop here on this video and it's going to have to be a two-parter, but it actually is working if I turn it on. But that's for the next video. I have a 3D printed shell from PCB Way, which is fantastic. So I'm going to put that on there and paint it and everything. And I'll show you how I programmed it and how it works. But if you like this video, I sure would appreciate a big thumbs up. If you want to see more, what you do, you want to see what this little robot comes out to. So you better hit the subscribe button. I want to thank these people right here. These are patrons. These are people helping me out. Other than PCB Way, these are the producers here. These are the ones helping me and bringing you these little robots. So I thank them very, very much. And if you want to become a patron, of course, there's links and all. So thanks to the patrons. Thanks for PCB Way. Stay tuned for the rest of my little robot. That was... Randy Robot Garage. <laughs>